Hello grade 12 physical science learners and welcome back to my channel. I'm Ms. Martins and in today's video we're going to be going over what you can expect, the different topics for term 2. I'll be going over what the different topics are this term, the subtopics, what you need to know for each topic, I give you formulas and in this video I'm going to tell you how to prepare for these topics as well. So I'll give you lots of teacher tips on how to prepare coming from me being a teacher myself and I will show you all of this in free document that I've created for you. It's available on my website missmartins.co.za if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure to subscribe because all the topics that I mentioned in today's video, I will be making more videos on those topics if I don't have videos on them already in my channel. Before we jump into the topics, the different subtopics, how you can prepare, I just want to mention that the order of the topics that I mentioned in this video are in line with those listed in the grade 12 ATPs. And this is basically a document that the Department of Education um, publishes. You can see it linked in the description box below. And they give an indication of the order that they think the topics should be taught in. However, your school may teach these topics in a different order. So your school may decide to not follow the ATPs. And therefore, the term two topics might not align with this video. So always double check what the order of topics is with your school and with your teacher. Just a reminder that everything that you see in this video is can be found in my free document where I list each topic in detail. You can find this on my website, missmartins.co.ca, where you can download it for free. So basically, I created it like a checklist so that you can print it, stick it in your book. You can use it while you're going through the topics in class. You can use it while you're studying as a checklist. And because this is a matric video, the document also includes very important information about your prelim exams and your final exams. So these are the topics according to the ATPs that your school will cover in term two. Now it is a lot. Remember, you're in grade 12, so we are kind of squashing in a lot of topics in one term. You can see that's a lot of chemistry topics, but there are also some physics topics and they're quite big topics. And that is the order in which the government or the department recommends that your school teaches it in. So most schools do follow the ATPs. So let's take a look at the different topics. So our first topic is called work, energy and power. This is a massive physics topic. And I will remind you how you can prepare for this topic. We have got defining work, understanding the difference between positive, negative, and network. You need to be able to draw force and free body diagrams. So immediately you can see that this is stuff from grade 11 that you need to know how to do. Calculate the network done on an object. State the work energy theorem and apply it on horizontal, vertical, and inclined planes. Define conservative and non-conservative forces and give examples and it does carry on over here there's a lot that has to do with energy so the principle of conservation of mechanical energy and here's a new formula that you will be learning power calculating power defining power and using power to work out certain calculations now there are a few things that you can do in order to prepare for the work energy power topic and that includes going over energy. Now, energy is a topic that we learned in grade 10 physical sciences. And in particular, we learned about the law of conservation of mechanical energy. So that the total mechanical energy is conserved in a system. Remember, the sum of potential and kinetic energy before a collision is the same as the sum of potential and kinetic energy after a collision. Now, going over this will be very helpful because you need to use this again in this section. And we learn about a few more extra things, but you need to be able to apply this principle as well. And I said over here, go over Newton's laws, in particular, how to calculate net force. This is a very, very important thing that you need to be able to recap in order to do, because you are going to use net force in order to calculate net work. So you might need to go over the entire Newton's law section. I do have a playlist on my channel with a lot of videos. I also have a study guide that I'm working on. Just check out my um, website for more information about that. And then I wrote here, read over the theory and the basics. Because if you have already read over the, the terms, the concepts, and a little bit about the formulas before your teacher goes over it, you will be prepared when your teacher gets to that in class. And just to show you, I do actually mention the important formulae that you need to know for each little subtopic. I go over what you need to remember, what they give you on the data sheet. And what's actually very useful about this document is 
I give you the formulas that they give you in your final physical sciences exams. So everything that you see highlighted in yellow, they give you on your data sheet in your exam. However, everything else that's on this formula sheet but is not highlighted in yellow, so all of the other stuff, so for example, this stuff over here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I expand the formulas. I expand each formula. That is not given on your data sheet, but you need to know how to do that. So I think that downloading this document and using this data sheet is very helpful. You need to know how to expand the different formulas because they just give you the basic formula in your data sheet. You need to know how to take that formula, expand it, substitute in, and get an answer. Our next topic is another physics topic called the Doppler effect. Now this has to do with sound and it links to the waves topic, which we did cover in grade 10 and in grade 11. So the Doppler effect is a completely new concept. You may have been taught it or it may have been mentioned to you in previous grades, but you need to know the definition. You need to know what happens when a sound source, so something that is making a sound, moves away from you or moves towards you or if a listener moves away from a sound source or towards a sound source. It's a very interesting topic. It's a very short topic. And you do learn a new formula that you need to be able to apply. And you also need to apply the Doppler effect to situations that involve light. So Doppler effect and light. Everything is listed in this document. Again, the data sheet is probably one of the most useful parts of this document. I have highlighted the formulas that they give you on the data sheet in your tests and in your exams. And I expand on some of them. I explain some of them and when you would use it. So that is very, very helpful. In order to prepare for this section, what can you do? You can go over the topic waves from grade 10, especially how to calculate frequency, wavelength, and wave speed. Because if you go back to the formula sheet that they give you for Doppler effects, you will see that you need to be able to calculate all of these things in order to use the new Doppler effect formula. Our next topic is for all the chemistry lovers out there. It is rates and extent of chemical reactions. Now, again, this is a new topic, but it builds a lot on things that you've already learned in grade 10 and in grade 11. So I've broken down the subtopics. There's a new formula that you need to learn. Although beware, this formula is not given on your data sheet. You need to be able to just look at the question and know how to apply the formula. So if they ask you to calculate the rate, but they give you mass, how mass changes over time, then it'll be change in mass over change in time. If they give you how volume changes, so in the beginning we have no volume, and at the end of the experiment we've collected a large volume of gas, then it'll be change in volume over change in time. You need to know a lot of different things, like how what different factors influence the rate of a reaction. So for example, temperature. So higher temperature, hotter, higher rates of reaction. Colder, so lower temperature, slower rates of reaction or lower rates of reaction. So again, I've listed all the subtopics. You need to know how to do each and every one of these. And I do eventually list all the formulas that apply to this topic. I will get to this in a second. But for now, just make sure that when you cover this topic, rates and extent of reactions, you can do all of the different subtopics. But how can you prepare for this? This topic is strongly linked to energy and change, which is the grade 11 topic. Now, if you can recall, we learned about activation energy, catalyst, exothermic versus endothermic reactions, basically how the energy changes as the reaction proceeds. I hope you can all remember that. So we need an activation energy in order to get the reaction started. Then you have the activated complex at the top. A catalyst speeds up the rate of the reaction by lowering the activation energy. All of that stuff you need to know again for this topic. They can test this in grade 12. But the rates and extent of chemical reactions builds on this. If you've already learned about the collision theory, which a lot of schools already teach this in grade 11, Go over that again, because that is what this topic is built upon, the collision theory. And stoichiometry. So that's the quantitative aspects of chemical change. All the different calculations. You know, where you calculate mass, volume, number of moles, and you use mole ratios. All of that stoichiometry plays a massive part in this topic. So if you need to go over that topic again, 
you need to practice it. Go look at videos on my channel. I also already have a stoichiometry study guide. So I will link the, the purchase link for that in the description below as well. It's very, very helpful. I do even have some rates of reaction questions in that little book. So make sure you go over it. Make sure you are familiar with all the calculations, all the stoichiometry. Then we've got another chemistry topic called chemical equilibrium. This is quite a nice topic if you get this down. So if you know how to do this, you can actually get quite a lot of marks in your exam because one of the calculations where you have to calculate what we call a KC value can be six, seven, eight, nine marks. So it's one of those topics where if you know what you're doing, you can get all of those marks. If you don't know what you're doing, you could lose all of those marks. So it's very important to understand this topic from the beginning. But basically, it's all about a reversible reaction. So reactions that have a double arrow like this. You get taught a new concept called KC, which I've mentioned. You need to know Le Chatelier's principle. All of these stuff will be taught to you. I do recommend reading up on it in your textbook to get familiar with the concepts. Of course, I'll be posting videos on this, so subscribe if you haven't already. But how can you prepare for this one? Because it's a relatively new topic, what you can do once again is go over stoichiometry, which is also called the quantitative aspects of chemical change. Again, I have videos on it. It's all about practice. You have to practice. You have to perfect this. Because if you can do this, then learning the new kind of concepts and topics within this section will be easy. But you can see my guide if you need more help on that. And then last but definitely not least, we have another chemistry topic called acids and bases. Now, this is a topic that has come up in grade 11 chemistry already. You should have already learned a lot of the acid and bases topic from in grade 11. We build upon that. So a lot of the things listed in this document, like define acids and bases according to the Arrhenius and Lowry Bronsted theories, you should have done that in grade 11. Distinguish between strong and weak acids or bases and concentrated or dilute acids or bases, you should have done that. Conjugate acid bases pairs, you should have done that. Most of these things should have been done already, including calculations based on titration reactions using this formula. If you are familiar with this already, then obviously the most obvious way to prepare for this topic is to go over the stuff, because again, the stuff you learned in grade 11 will be asked again in grade 12, we just build on it. So there's more stuff. Most people do not learn how to calculate pH in grade 11, although some schools teach it, like I teach it at the school where I work in grade 11, so that when we get to metric, my learners are already familiar with it, so there's not a lot of new work. So knowing how to calculate the pH using this formula of strong acids and strong bases, you learn about Kw. This helps you calculate the pH of a base and all of those things. So again, this is a topic that you can prepare by going over grade 11 acids and bases. Another way you can prepare for it is by going over, again, stoichiometry. So as you can see, stoichiometry is very important. You need to go over that stuff if you've forgotten how to do it. Now, again, nice thing about this document, the free document that you can download, is that I have a data sheet for all of these chem um, chemistry sections. So I've kind of combined all the formulas onto one page for you. And remember, not all of this is given on your actual formula sheets in your metric exams. Like, for example, this one over here, rates of reaction. This isn't given on your formula sheet. Like I explained earlier, you need to know where this comes from. You need to just know when to use it and how to use it. And these things, this is stoichiometry. And I said these can be used in all three chemistry sections. You need to practice this. And this is acids and bases. Right. Now, the last thing that you can find in this document is information about your prelim exams. So these are your mock exams or the exams that you do in term three and your final exams. So it gives you a mark breakdown, what you can expect for each section and how much it counts more or less in your final exams. Now, again, just a reminder, you can get this document on my website. So please go check that out if you haven't done so yet and subscribe because I will be doing more videos on each of these topics this term and I'll be doing exam practice videos so you don't want to miss that. I will see you in videos very soon in the future. Bye everyone!